G'day YouTube, welcome back, 1MJ here. Well, I thought I'd start off with an interesting little story here. Game-changing blockchain program tracks mangoes in Australia. So, Australia, it's good to see that we are getting on board with this whole blockchain thing. Be good if we got on board with uh, a bit more of the cryptocurrency side, but look, blockchain in general uh, is going to be big business. So this is really, uh, really good and we'll have to wait and see whether it pays off. I mean, they've invested some money. They've been trialing it for sort of two and a half years now. Uh, and, you know, I guess, you know, without uh, any pun being in, pun being intended, we'll see uh, if it bears any fruit. Ha ha. <laughs> that was pretty poor. But anyway, let's continue. So following a two and a half year long pilot program, an Australian, Australian mango, mango producer is scaling up its use of blockchain technology for supply chain traceability. According to the Cooperative Research Centre for Developing Northern Australia, or the CRCNA, the, organis the organisation partnered with, with leading Australian mango producer Manbalu and traceability software company Trust Provenance uh, to test a supply chain management program across their supply chain and the distribution centres in Queensland and the Northern Territory. Nice, NT. That's where I'm from. The project, which kicked off in 2018, employs sensors placed in mango crates to track the movement of the sweet fruit, in addition to monitoring its temperature, humidity, and transit time. Dr. Sam Mc, uh, McMahon, Senator for the Northern Territory, said, Manbalu can see where the fruit is across the supply chain in real time and maintain proactive quality control and quality assurance protocol to address any issues immediately. Uh, and complement what is already best, uh, or what is already a best in industry approach. McMahon added that this project is shaping, shaping up to be a significant game changer for the mango industry. So they've already raised more than eight hundred twenty-seven thousand uh, for this two and a half year testing, and it began back in April two thousand and eighteen. So. Uh, Coin Telegraph uh, reported in July that $300 billion worth of food items could potentially be traced along the supply chain annually within seven years. So, you know, they put in, you know, just under a mil here and it could turn into a $300 billion, you know, sort of industry or at least have $300 billion worth of product being traced just within the next seven years. So well done to Australia, uh, you know, in adopting blockchain. Again, for me, I'd really like to see Australia get into uh, the Bitcoin market. We need to have some big mining uh, stuff being done here in Australia, is my personal opinion. But, you know, anyway, we'll have to wait and see. Now, today, Bitcoin uh, has got on a bit of a run again. And guess what happens when it's getting ready to, you know, break over a really key sort of resistance support level. More resistance than support, of course. You couldn't have guessed it, an exchange happens to go down. Now, it wasn't Bitfinex this time. Bitfinex has obviously got enough issues at, at the moment. Coinbase this time. Give us a break, guys. Come on, I, I really don't understand what is happening here. I can only imagine that they're trying to suppress the price uh, so they can get more. Or yeah, Look, I don't even know. But it just seems every time Bitcoin is getting on a run now, so, you know, one of the exchanges goes down and there's something going on. Let's have a read of this one and what their reasoning is. So US cryptocurrency exchange Coinbase has disabled trading due to feed issues amid Bitcoin's uh, ascension towards 2019 highs near 13,800. How is their feed issues when we're getting close to this high point? They weren't noticed before at a low point. It just seems, you know, Regulation, while I don't want too much of it, it's definitely required. But whether we'll ever get to the truth of why, you know, certain exchanges consistently do this. And look, Coinbase, I wouldn't say the worst offender, but they've definitely done this before. Uh, and now it seems like they've taken over from Bitfinex. So this is uh, quite frustrating. But anyway, we'll continue to read. According to a company... Uh, update on Wednesday, Coinbase said they were currently investigating the issue while no further comment was provided, of course not. Coinbase has suffered a number of, number of outages during busy trading periods this year, including on September the 4th, the last time an outage caused trading to halt, according uh, to the company's status page. So again, this has been going on for a while. Uh, and you know, if it's not Coinbase, it's Bitfinex, and then if it's not Bitfinex, it's somebody else. 
uh, and it's just an ongoing issue. I hope this really gets sorted out sometime soon because it's frustrating, annoying, and it's only going to hold the market back, uh, at least in the short term. In the long term, we'll be able to get past it, but short term, yeah, annoying. Anyway, let's move on. So the market cap is up 409 billion. So again, now we've got to get up to that 400 and sort of 30 billion uh, dollar mark. I think that's round about where we were at the peak uh, before we had this downturn. So we still got a little ways to go, which is good. And Bitcoin, again, we got right up. I saw this at 13,700 and something. And then, yep, we started to pull back. But look, long term, uh, sorry, uh, in the sort of short term, we've been going up, which is good. Uh, and look, I mean, I guess, you know, even long term, we've been going up, you know, since Bitcoin's creation, really. But things are moving. Gas, 40, not too bad. But here we go. As I said, this BTC dominance, it just keeps creaming up. Now we're at almost 62%. Uh, I think that 65% is going to happen very, very shortly, particularly once we hit that kind of $14,000 mark. I think this is going to be at 65%. And I think until we get to around about 20,000, I think it's going to be somewhere between 65 to 75%. I think more around that 70% mark, we should get close to that, but possibly even... Yeah, that 75% mark uh, in Bitcoin. But once we hit that $14,000 mark, uh, it, uh, sorry, once we hit that $20,000 mark, I think it'll start to come back down. I think you'll see a lot of profits taken from Bitcoin uh, and the exuberance will be on and all our altcoins will start to pump. Now we can see uh, Ethereum falling back down below $400. So we can have a look at Bitcoin. And this is where we are. Now, there may be some uh, thunder and stuff going on. We've got a fairly big storm happening where I am right now. So again, we pumped up and you can see that we just breached it. There you go, 13,800 uh, on Bitstamp. It wicked and then it fell down. Now, I am somewhat slightly concerned. We've had this big exuberance. Generally, there's going to be some kind of pullback. Again, you can look at this and there's you know, this, and then we saw something like this. And then it pumped up a little bit more and we saw something like this. Now, there's no guarantee that this is going to happen, but this is quite a move. I mean, if we grab a ruler and we go from here to here, so we have had, sorry, get rid of that. Oh, that'll be right. I think that was a 22% move, something like that, with very little retracement. So there we go. Yep, 22, basically nearly 23% move. So if we go right up to here, where it is, so 23% move. We've had a 23% move with very little pullback. Bitcoin doesn't do that too often. So I'm just saying buyer beware. And look, if there is a pullback, I don't think we're going to go much lower than this uh, level here. I think we might come back down and retest this. But there's no guarantees. I think there is a lot of uh, exuberance in the market at the moment. And any pullbacks are going to be bought up pretty quickly, no matter sort of, you know, how high we get. Really, until we get, to my personal opinion, is around 25,000, 30,000. Uh, I think even the institutional buyers will be pretty happy to buy uh, Bitcoin up at that price. As that'll be the late comers, though. The, the early adopters, I'm pretty sure they'll stop buying around the $20,000 mark. Once it hits uh, its old all-time high, I think, you know, again, the early adopters, they'll probably stop buying in because they'll just be waiting for the next bear market. Could be wrong. But I think all the latecomers to the party, uh, they'll continue buying it right up to about 25, 35,000. Uh, and again, then retail starts to flood in and all the rest of it. Uh, and don't get me wrong, there'll be some really, really late institutional buyers who'll probably be buying it at 35, 45,000 and things like that. But, you know, we'll have to wait and see. But just buyer beware, we could have a reasonable pullback. And again, we're not going to, I don't think we're coming back down to test 12,000. I think that's highly unlikely. I think we might come back down and test this $12,500 level, but I'm thinking more, maybe we come back down and test the $13,000 level. Again, any dips here at the moment, I think will be uh, bought up quite quickly. And you can see the dips here, there's not much to them, so they're being bought up fairly quickly. All right, Ethereum, let's have a look. So we've dipped back down below that $400 mark, so now we're down at about 398 
but still following this trend line. I don't think this trend line is going to be broken. I think this is going to hold. I think we're probably going to come down here uh, and start to move up again. Now, I don't know if Ethereum is going to have any big massive breakouts while Bitcoin gets on its run, but I think it will still continue to follow this trend line. I don't see it broken anytime soon. But look, I could be wrong. And I've been wrong before, and I can guarantee at some stage I'll be wrong again. But, you know, from what I've seen of this space of the last few years, uh, I'm pretty confident uh, in, you know, having a, at least a, a rough understanding of what might be coming. No one can predict exactly what's coming, and anyone who tells you they uh, do know what's coming, buy or beware of that person. Uh, but, you know, look, everyone's entitled to their opinion, and that's just mine. Last but not least, let's go over to synthetics. So it's done exactly what I thought. Uh, it didn't break out, it's rolled over, and it's coming down again. I am still waiting to see if we're going to come back down and test this $3 level. And if we do test this $3 level, do we come down and test this kind of $2.60 mark? This is where I think we might find some support, if it's not found earlier. I would be somewhat surprised if we come down and test this level. I am more expecting this to maybe sort of roll over uh, and then start to break out. Uh, I think we may have hit the cycle low, but you know, time will tell. DeFi has really uh, taken the brunt of all the hits at the moment, uh, and they aren't bouncing back anywhere near as good as some of the other things, you know, Litecoin uh, and things like that. But at some stage, they are going to find their way out of uh, this dip. That's just the way it works, and particularly the good projects. And it's not financial advice, it's just my personal opinion. I think uh, Synthetics Network is a great platform, uh, and it's it's disrupting the old markets. It's disrupting the old system, and that's why I think it will succeed and do extremely well. And they've just got a great team behind them. They, they market really well. They've come up with a great product. They're constantly innovating. They've already moved to you know scaling solutions and things like that. So I am just waiting for a buy-in point for synthetics at the moment. I just I'm, I'm not ready to buy in until I see uh, a, a somewhat clean breakout where maybe it breaks out, comes back down and retests this and then starts to move. Otherwise, it could be a fake out and we could be coming down to $2.60 and we may even be coming down to $1.30. So I don't really want to be buying you know, at $3 something and it makes its way down to $1.30. But in saying that, I don't think we're going to come back down this far. But look, it could be possible. All right. Stay safe. Be kind to one another. Hopefully you're on that gain train. Most of us should be, unless you're not in Bitcoin. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, and I'll see you next time.